Mr. Roberts, would you agree with this statement that the lands that are managed by uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs and by BLM for the tribes and for individual members of the tribes are not public lands? They're, they're, they're different than our normal public no, lands. No. Yes or no? <laughs> they are not public lands. They're, we hold them in trust for the tribes. That's right. And, and I think that's the crux of the problem here, mm -hmm. is these are not public lands, but yet they get treated all the time as if they are as if they are minerals that are owned by the people of the United States as opposed to minerals that are owned by sovereign nations and by the people of sovereign nations. And that, until we really start appreciating that there is a differentiation here, um, I think that we will always be at this table arguing this point over and over and over again. And, you know, you can say, well, that this was set up because there is this trust obligation but um, the, the facts that were revealed in the litigation, Cobell, tell us, you know, that fiduciary obligation and that trust obligation hasn't been well managed, continues to not be well managed by the Department of Interior. So, uh, Senator, I, I, I can assure you that we take our trust responsibilities very seriously. Um, you know, it was this administration that settled the Cobell litigation. It's this administration that has settled over 80 trust settlements with tribes and in, 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 I, and I understand that. I, I'm, I'm trying to make a point which is historic. It's not just about this administration. And we, we constantly try and deal with the facts that are in front of us instead of looking at this in a historic context, which is that these are minerals that belong to a different sovereign nation, just as you shouldn't require an, EIA, uh, an EIS for the state to drill on, uh, lease its own minerals. I don't know why we're in this situation, delaying permits and delaying leases and delaying the things that need to be done when you have elected tribal governments that are, have that responsibility. And, and I think that's a historic anomaly, but that's why we're here. We're here because of the structure that we've set up here in Congress that manages um, minerals that are owned by um, people other than the people of the United States. And so, I mean, obviously citizens of the United States, but not in the context of traditional BLM minerals. Um, yeah, I wanna, I wanna get to the, the um, employment issue that Senator Tester raised, um, because I've done a lot of work on this with OPM, and, and we've been able to get um, uh, various accommodations from OPM through the Department of Defense. We're working now with USDA. Department of Interior has been really slow okay. to work with us to try and make sure that OPM is doing what they can to deal with high cost of living and low um, uh, participation rates in the federal workforce. And so, you know, we can't get this work done until we staff to get this work done. And so I want a commitment from you, Mr. Roberts, that you will take back to Department of Interior my frustration that, that we continue to work on this, but we haven't gotten... Um, very far in terms of uh, making sure that we get salary adjustments that will add to the workforce. Absolutely, Senator. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, you know, just just a final point, and I don't have a lot of time left, but Man Man Mandan Hadats and Arikara Nation has counted 100 steps and up to seven agencies who provide a permit for drilling on tribal land. Let me repeat that, 100 steps and up to seven, uh, seven agencies. Um, I, I'm glad that you're talking about centralizing this. It's what some of the tribes have, have uh, um, done. I think the tribe's proposal, the Mandan, Hadats, and Arikara proposal is to provide a director to oversee permitting um, requirements for all the agencies involved. Um, would creating this office under your plan resolve, I think, staffing issues? And would having one point of accountability for the tribes to actually, instead of you know trying to deal with fish and wildlife, trying to deal with BLM, trying to deal with the myriad of, of, of federal agencies, shouldn't there just be one person accountable in all of this? That's that's the design of the service center. And you're right, Senator, we, we heard that from tribes and, and we've consulted with tribes. I mean, it was their idea for the service center and so we're trying to implement that. I think I think this is um, this is incredibly frustrating because the time when we could have been producing oil at $100 a barrel, um, you know that opportunity as we look at oil prices now at 45, and if if you're looking at from from the standpoint of a uh, uh, production company or a drilling company, and you have all the headaches 
of trying to work through, you know, a hundred different um, uh, uh, steps and seven agencies, you are not going to drill in Indian country. And so I, I just, I, I would like at some point somebody to really examine this issue of, of going back and just thinking about this differently. It's not public land. It is land that is owned by sovereign nations. It is land that owned by members of sovereign nation. That a lot of this system was set up to be paternal and to, to um, you know, kind of dictate. And there's nothing that would recommend in the past. And I'm not saying it's this administration, but when you go past, that would recommend that we've really fulfilled our fiduciary obligation or our trust obligation to either individual members of the tribe or the tribe themselves. And so there's no doubt there's a, there's a legitimacy to the frustration that we, we see today and we continue to see. And so this needs to be resolved maybe in a broader context.